you doing? You always bring it to the table, baby. You've been getting me laid commitment free for countless times. Love it. Everybody listening, this is the guy to listen to. Listen to this guy. It makes me sick to my stomach the way they worship you. Like you're some sort of god or something, and you've got your own little Bible going on. When you're just trying to get laid, being a nice guy in any way, that reputation will kill you. It will kill you. Yeah, dig that, dig that. I think you are the foulest piece of excuse of a human being. Good, I'm glad you feel that way. To be out there telling our youth our young people of America, that they should be treating women like dirt. Yes, and uh, they should. I feel very sorry for you. I don't have money for nothing anymore, you know what I mean? I used to have money for parties, for partying, if you will, you know what I'm saying? I could go wherever, do whatever, and now, now I'm stuck, man. I just, and the next step is getting married. <laughs> and it's like, oh, dude, I should have listened. I should have just stayed on the curriculum, man. Are you jealous because you don't have a vagina oh, like me? Oh, yeah. It's vagina that envy. Is that what you really want? Darling, I, but why, would, why would I wish for a staph you infection like what you've got down there? Are you kidding me? Are you jealous you don't have a vagina all like that's me? All that's missing from that roast beef sandwich is a little horseradish, uh, sweetheart. I always tell them I don't want kids because, uh, first of all, I might have them someday when I'm like really old. Maybe. I'm not even sure. But for now, to me, it's a headache. It's a big problem. Right. And they always they look at me, oh, my God, you're a monster. Did you just say that? You know who kids are? They're our future. Maybe they are, but they're not my future. My uh. future is just my life. Tell you what, if some man tried telling me what to do with my body, he wouldn't be serving 18 months. I'd be serving 25 to life for killing his ass. Well, there you go. It is my body and my choice. And you know what? If he was stupid enough not to wrap his tools, then that's his own gosh darn fault. Well, but again, uh, you then would be in the position of trying to deceive him into having a baby with you. Well, you know what? It takes a stupid man to get tricked by a stupid bitch. You're teaching all these young guys how to treat women. And That's right. What's the best way to treat women? Yes. Oh, my God. And, you know, I have a 16-year-old. I am scared to death for her. Drew, what did you want to say to Christy? Tom, this is Drew. I wanted to let her know that I'm a senior vice president of a major corporation. I can't wait for our daughter to turn legal age so I could take her out and have my way with her. I think you're an idiot. You do? Yes. Really? What is your IQ, darling? You are ugly. What does that have to do with doing a radio show? Well, you are giving bad advices to these young boys. I'll bet you're unshaven. Poisoning. Poisoning their mind. I mean, what the hell? Why do you hate women so much? I don't. You don't really no. like to assume the guy's girl for well, There's no better more. place as far as a sperm depository. It beats a milk bottle. It beats a oh. sweat sock. I don't, I don't get that. I don't need anybody's money. Well, if you were more attractive, you probably would have taken it for a lot more. I'm a beauty queen. I happened to have been Miss Ventura County when I was a little girl. Miss no, Ventura very... County. Wow. Yeah. And my so voice I can imagine that one. Miss I Oxnard beat beautiful. Miss Channel Islands. It was a big What's one. That? You watch your mouth. You can't say that stuff on the air. And if you say it again, we're going to hang up on you. And by the way, that, uh, another example of why you're not worth 10 cents. You're just a typical cheap whore uh, with a filthy mouth. From somewhere in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about it. It's a different kind. I'm a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. <laughs> I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's one 800 8 Six, six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday. 
Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, our screener, Dino, will kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Just call 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I will say that one of the stations that carries our show, and I'm not going to embarrass them, or give anything away here, is changing format. And um, soon you won't be able to hear our show on their station. Not going to tell you which one. It's not L.A. Okay. But what I want you to do is to make sure you remember that you can hear our show on blowmeuptom.com every afternoon or evening from 3 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. You will always have access to it. There's also podcasts of the show, and I want you to be aware of that. You go to blowmeuptom.com and all the details are there. Yes. Anyway, let's go to your calls here at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Uh, you know, I can understand what you're saying uh, about, you know, McCain, you know, why you don't like him but but let's face it i mean the most important thing to you is money and who's going to put the most money in your pocket if they're elected oh i don't agree with that for one second um i never made more money uh in the stock market uh than i did during the uh the eight years of bill clinton so you're going to rely on corporate earnings instead of somebody who's going to change the capital gains rate from 15 to 28 percent, that being a Democrat. Uh, no, he's only going to do it with the cooperation of Congress. And I might add uh, that uh, Bill Clinton raised taxes and the economy was better and I made more money in the 90s than I'm making now. Wow. That's a fact. <laughs> I am a self-made multimillionaire. I'm I'm not I am not I am not but but here's the thing I am not a Republican or a Democrat. Neither am I. Okay. And and John McCain uh is a wild card. If you think he's going to reliably keep taxes down or reliably do anything, guess again, the guy's a powder keg. Yeah. There's a reason there's a reason the conservatives hate the guy. Yeah, I just think that it's a surety with the Democrats that they will repel the Bush. But, but you, what you don't understand is that, you see, the president does not operate in a vacuum. This is not a dictatorship. You know, Hillary Clinton wanted to push Bill, the House. No, no. Hillary Clinton, who wanted to push Bill Clinton to, to, to push for national health care, did they pull that off? No. Yeah, but the, the, the House is going to be in control of the Democrats. So By a slim a margin. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you know, as a self made well, we'll get to your next point in a second here. Let's finish with this one before we get to the next one. Okay. As a self made multimillionaire, you must understand that gridlock is the best thing that ever happened to people who like to make money. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to be. A, of course it is. Are you kidding me? The Democrats don't have a, a solid majority in the House or the Senate. Uh, I don't know. With, with coming up, I think they will. If if he's elected, Obama. Well, then you, that should tell you something, that people got up off their ass and went out and voted out uh, the Republicans. If that happens, it tells you something. By the way, this whole idea that the Republicans are conservative and they they don't spend and, and the, the Democrats are liberal tax and spenders, this is all a lot of baloney. Uh, the, the Congress and the president have spent so much money the last seven years, it's not funny. Uh, We're broke. Uh, We're broke. Both, both sides have We, we can, are can broke. You blame, can you blame McCain, though, for not wanting to get on your show? I mean, do, do you think that Hillary or... Well, you don't understand. You don't understand. 20 years ago, I did a different show. Okay. 20 years ago, my show was about news and politics. If I was a politician, I'd have a hard time getting on the phone with well, you. Well, I've interviewed many politicians over the years, but I didn't do the show I do today. Mm -hmm. So it, it it was not the same back then, but I'm trying to tell you, uh, you know, you are naive 
if after what's happened the last seven years, you believe that Republicans are going to be more responsible fiscally? For, for my personal benefit, I think they will. I, 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 I totally disagree. I there, totally... There was an article in the Wall Street Journal, too, that said that when you raise taxes... The wealthy have way, ways of deferring those taxes, and ultimately the government ends up collecting less in, in revenue. Well, all I know is that we had a budget surplus when Bill Clinton was the president and he raised taxes. Yeah, you can't deny the it. The marginal tax rate went he, down with Bush in the office. That's not the point. When Bill Clinton was president, he raised taxes, and we had a budget surplus. Yeah, I mean, the capital gains thing is enough to, to deter me. I mean, uh, and two, and the stock market. Really well, huge. look, but you're not making any capital gains. The stock market's been in the crapper. Uh, it depends how soon. And by the way, if you, by the way, you with the short memory, the stock market was in the crapper the last time a guy named George Bush was the president. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you about another topic? Uh, how conveniently you want to do the old soft shoe and move on to another topic, yes. And the fact is, the stock market has stunk under both George Bushes. It has stunk. Uh, I'll, I'll, and in I'll the 90s, down, the stock market was going through the roof. And my, you see, what I look at, Michael, I look at the bottom line after profits, after taxes, after expenses. What am I left with? And I'm telling you, as someone who's been investing in the stock market for over 20 years, that I made more money when Bill Clinton was the president than either George Bush. Okay. Fair enough. And I, by the way, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not, right. even, a, I'm not even a liberal. Can I, can I ask you about another uh, subject? Yeah, now you can. I, I read an article in the New York Times yesterday. And the headline was, one in 100 U.S. adults are behind bars. It was a fascinating subject that delved into different, you know, demographics. And, I mean, the figures were staggering. Is that what Bob Saget's game show is all about, one versus 100? <laughs> is, that, is that why they're all stacked on top of each other, those like prisoners or something? What is that? Yeah, I don't know about Bob Saget's show. And maybe Bob ought to change the format. They ought to do it for like Folsom Prison. Just have a yeah. It's like you're the contestant. You go up against the hundred prisoners. <laughs> it's scary. It's anyway. Scary. Yeah. Well. Uh, but again, Michael, why are one one out of one hundred Americans behind bars? It's because Republicans love making laws that make everything illegal. There's not enough social services to keep people out of the jails to give them handouts. <laughs> Well, all I know is uh, the first people we should let out of jail is everybody who's ever smoked pot. That's true. Definitely. Right. Uh, it, it, th then we should let everybody out who ever drank under the age of 21. Then we should let everybody out who ever had a prostitute. See, I'm a true libertarian. Yeah. I, I, the figures, I mean, it went through uh, how much it costs to keep somebody incarcerated. It was $25,000 a well, year. Well, there you go. And, there are, and by the way, the country's been run by Republicans for years now, at least since 1996, uh, uh, at the Congress, uh, un, uh, until whatever it was, 2006, 10 years of that. And uh, between uh, 19, uh, how many years was it run by Republic? were the president Republican? Uh, uh, between 1980 and today, there were eight years where it was Democratic and the rest were Republicans. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and so uh, let's look at this. Uh, we have Republicans say they're going to reduce the size of government. Now you got one out of 100 Americans in prison. Yeah, it, it, the figures were just, I mean, one in 36. Is have bad. we reduced the size of government under Republican rule? Have we done that? No, and no. not during a wartime. So, really, you're naive to call in here and tell me that I'm going to be better off with John McCain than the Barack Obama. The reality is you have no idea who you're going to be better under. Nah, and Republicans have a, have a lousy contract. track record. By the way, I'm speaking as a libertarian, not a liberal. Yeah, but I mean, if you're under a fixed contract and making a set wage, say, you know, you, your your marginal tax rate will increase, so you're going to be making less money. That's I don't care, taxes. because if the stock market is in the crapper, I'm not paying any of those taxes anyway. If the, sto if the stock, see, during the 90s, uh, the tax on capital gains was higher, but there were more capital gains. Can you understand simple mathematics? I mean, who's making money in the stock market now? Nobody. 
Yeah, but you can't offset wage income off of capital losses. It's not the point. If there's no capital gains, there's no taxes being paid anyway. Sure, but you're paying. Would it matter? I mean, what if, if they raise the capital gains rate now to fifty percent? What difference would it make? Nobody's making any money in the stock market. I, I wouldn't say nobody, but I mean, uh, you're being a brick. You're being a brick now. No, you know as well as I do, you income. know as well as I do that people are not making money in the stock market. The Dow is down 14% from its high. To say that people aren't making money is just not true. Oh, because it's down 14% from its high? Yeah, that's nothing. But there's also the NASDAQ. There's also bonds. There's also people who invested in CDOs, people who invested in financial institutions. People who invested in uh, broad uh, uh, Wall Street brokerages. The, the point is, you're They're losing their shirts. Income. Aside from capital gains, you cannot avoid the fact that your wage income, you personally, your marginal tax rate will increase. It doesn't matter. What matters is at the end of the year, how much money do I have in my pocket after the profits from the stock market and the taxes I paid on. And the tax I, I, I pay my... respect your, your difference. We just agreed. Well, I, all I know is in the 90s, naive. I was raking it in. You can call it naive. I, I just... Agree. I call it naive because either you didn't make the right investments in the 90s and the not, or, or, or you're just naive because in the 90s, I was raking it in. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephone for Tom Likas Show at 1 800 800 Tom. It's Mario. Hello. Happy Friday. Yes, sir. I wanted to um, bring up the Lakers and the Celtics. How about the renewal of that rivalry? Well, I don't think most of uh, NBA fans today remember that rivalry. Uh, well, um, like well, let's take it's... let's take you. You're 28 years old. Uh, well, I mean, we've got Magic Johnson still around. We've got all those. But you come on. When Magic Johnson retired, you were 11. Yeah, he's still around. He's still relevant to a degree, but there's still a lot of um, old school. Like I'm just fans. I'm just saying, you're not one of them. Well, I mean, I'm a, like as a Lakers fan, I can appreciate the past and and looking at the. So you read about now, it in the paper. <laughs> um, I've seen the jerseys up in the uh, Staples Center. Celtics jerseys? No, Magic Johnson's jerseys up there. Oh, um, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just exciting. Sam Cassell possibly becoming a Celtic. Both teams fully loaded. It's going to be great. How many Celtics players from that era can you name? Um, I'm a pretty good basketball fan. How about Mikhail, uh, Larry Bird, uh, Dennis Johnson? Um, who else is there? Who else is there? Uh, I guess that's about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and what about the Lakers? Um, well, you had Magic, you had James Worthy, you had Kareem. You had, um, who did you have? Let's see. I guess, you, would it be Jamal Wilkes? Is he part of that team? I'm not telling you. You're just going to have to keep going. All right, let's see. I'll keep going. Um, what have I named so far? I got Magic, I got James, I got um, Byron Scott, uh, Kurt Rambis. Um, let's see. Oh, geez, I don't know. Michael Thompson. And, oh, speaking of Michael Thompson, Tom, if you allow me, what's with the sports uh, talk show guys? Why do they think that by screaming they're funny and makes them more interesting? Well, Why because they well, I, I guess they figure since nobody's listening, if they scream louder, they'll get more listeners. Uh, between the filling you and that um, other Papa, Papa, whatever his name what you, is. What uh, are you talking? Wait, wait. What are you talking about? That Papa Dacus, Papa Dac Petros. God, that guy. Who's that? Some idiot. Exactly. Who's that? Exactly, Tom. The Sports radio in Southern California is the biggest joke of the world. It's the biggest joke of the world. Those two stations together don't add up to the listenership we have. And we're not the highest-rated talk radio station in Southern California. It it's a it's joke. A, yeah, it's a joke. And you know what? To be sitting in traffic and to have someone yelling at me 
through that's the not, That's not the point. Can... The point is sports radio in this town is a joke. In fact, it's a joke most places. It's unlistenable. I was in New York where it's supposed to be so wonderful. It isn't wonderful. It, it's Vinny and Sal calling in three times a day and talking to guys who are hosts of the show who sound like Vinny and Sal. <laughs> it's unlistenable. Yeah. Hey, I want to talk if I want to talk about sports, I'll call my friends. I'm going to call some stupid radio station. Either way, the Lakers are rolling. Hey Tom, do me a favor. Can you take me out? Can you, actually, can you have Kurt Warner taken out by Halle Berry? Kurt Warner taken out by Halle Berry. In what order? <laughs> um, let's have let's, let's have him um preach in the corner and then have Halle Berry wipe him out. All uh, right, we'll start with uh, we'll start with Kurt Warner, and then we'll move on to Halle Berry. So uh, we'll start with Thank You Jesus. Here we go. Thanks, Dad. Thank you, son. Thank you, Jesus. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Love that sports talk radio. Love it. I Really, I wish you could see the ratings for those stations. You'd need an electron microscope. I am not kidding. Tammy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Um, I just have a question since you seem to be talking about the economy a lot today. Um, in your opinion, do you think that um, for the California area that the real estate market has hit bottom? Or do you think this is a good time to buy? Or is it okay to wait? Well, I think it's going to drop further. But uh, the bottom line is your home is not an investment. It's your home. Right. So if you're buying a house, your biggest concern is, am I getting the best possible deal on buying a house? Okay. Uh, but but my recommendation to you, don't try buying a house with the aim of selling it. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, I want to buy a house because I want to stay in the area and I want to live in it. So I just want to get a good deal. Yes. Well, it's a good time to buy for a number of reasons. One of them is that they have just raised the uh, amount of a conforming loan. Uh, you know what a conforming loan is as opposed to a jumbo mortgage, right? I think a jumbo mortgage is something over four seventeen. Yeah, well, they've just raised uh, the uh, the conforming loan to seven hundred and twenty nine thousand five hundred dollars. I believe it is. Wow, that's pretty good. And that means you can get a lower rate in most cases for a thirty year fixed up to that amount, and it's a limited time. I think it's only the rest of this year, so it's a window of opportunity. Obviously, they're trying to keep the uh, real estate market from completely crashing by doing that. Right. So do you think um, even if you have maybe 10 to 15 percent, you still should try to buy a house right now? Or do you do, do you usually recommend the full 20 percent? Well, I recommend you get as close to 20 percent as you can. And by the way, uh, it may not be my decision uh, because the, the other thing to consider is that banks now are requiring you put more down. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's true. So All you, right. you got to talk to the mortgage company or the bank. But, you know, that, that, that thing about the conforming loan as opposed to the jumbo, it's really only good for fixed loans. Okay. All right. And since you've been a long-time resident of um, Los Angeles, what do you think of the Long Beach area t to live in? Uh, which part of it? Um, like around the beach area. You mean as a place to make a real estate investment or as a place to live? As a place to live. Well, it's improved a lot over the years. I mean, by 20 years ago when I first moved to Los Angeles, that was a kind of a scary place. Uh-huh. And uh, like a lot of areas in Southern California that have been through the uh, the big earthquake of the, uh, the riots and all the stuff we went through, uh, it's improved dramatically. I think downtown Long Beach has improved by leaps and bounds. Okay. All right. So it is a good place because I've been looking around around the Southern California area, and that's still the most, I don't know, affordable place. Yeah, A lot of people find it to be the most affordable place at the same time being uh, a decent place to live. Yeah, there are more affordable places, but uh, you wouldn't want to go out at night. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Tom. I love your show and keep up the good work. Can you blow me up? Of course I can. Sound like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-TOM.
one 800 866 Tom, I just wanted to call up and just congratulate you on being the number one pick. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 tom Anything goes, anything at all. It's Friday. It's wide open telephones. Let's do it. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's going on, Dad? Not much, son. Oh, man. I heard the story about the Sweden guy in the 18 months or the kids. Yeah. 18 months for sure. I would take it. I wish I could take it right now. <laughs> I completely understand. It's a chick right now that I used, well, previously talked to, called me out the blue, said she's pregnant. Mind you, I had a condom on and it broke. So I went to Plan B and got the Plan B, watched her take it and everything. And I stopped talking to her after that because I didn't like how she reacted to the whole situation because I was doing everything. Called me a month and a half later saying she's pregnant. But mind you, we only did whatever we did every now and then off and on. She had her period more often than we got down, so that was needless to say that I was exclusive to her. So now I'm stuck with a girl that's keeping a baby. Allegedly, that's mine. I am not supportive of it and stuck in a very bad situation. Well, I keep warning the boys. I've warned you, and I keep warning everybody. You know, if someone's not wearing, uh, if someone's not using birth control, if a woman's not using it, means she wants to get pregnant. And you need to know if she is or isn't. It's funny because she said she's using it. But, then, yeah, but, but, but if you ever have to tell her, if you have to twist her arm to do it, if she does it reluctantly, she will conveniently forget it. Trust me. Selling a .01% twice in eight hours. That was it's ridiculous, Tom. Yeah. Try to follow the rules and look what happens. Well, uh, John, I, all I can say is, uh, you know, if a woman is not using birth control, run. I, I did the best I could do. I told her. I'm like, you want the baby, I don't. You do what you got to do. I support you financially, whatever you want. But like I said, I stand on my decision. No kids over here. Well, John, I, I hope you stick to that. I'll tell you that. 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones on the top like his show. Austin, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello. How you doing? Great. Great. Amazing. I was just calling in today to find out uh, what you think about people who illegally download using the Internet. Well, there's less of them than there used to be. More and more people have adopted iTunes. Did you see iTunes is the number two retailer of music in the country? Behind... No, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think Walmart is number one and iTunes is number two. Wow. So yeah. more and more people are, are buying the content. Oh, yeah, that, that was, like, my opinion. See, I, I do, like, download on the Internet using, like, BitTorrent and stuff. But, like, Michael Quayton, uh I never saw in theaters, but I saw it via online. And it was so good that I went out and bought it. So I'm just, like, saying I don't think it's as big as a, of a problem anymore. And people are making a big deal about well, it. Well, it, you know, here's how it's a problem. Um, some huge percentage of people your age, Austin, don't ever buy CDs anymore. Ever. All right. I forget what the number was. This just came out the other day. There's some huge percentage who now never buy a CD, ever. That, that's, that's really sad. Well, the problem with that is that if the record companies don't make any money, they're going to stop producing content for you to illegally download. Right. So, yeah, because me, like, first thing, I'd rather actually have the CD because... Like, I know what you're saying, but there's also people who say, hey, I already saw Michael Clayton, why do I need to buy it? Right. Right. All right, I, I just want to see, like... Here like, it is. 48% for, of young people in America don't ever buy CDs anymore. Do you think the government should do something about it? What, like, make people buy CDs, put a gun to your head? No, I mean, like, you know, like, restrict Internet access for those, because... No. I mean, like, 
No. Other countries, they do that. No, I think this problem will best be solved by the free market. Uh, one of the things the record companies do is they upload fake files to BitTorrent and these other uh, file-sharing websites. So you spend your time downloading and downloading and downloading, and you find out you just get a bunch of white noise. Right. Things like that. I mean, the best solution is going to be for them to find a price people are willing to pay for content. And right. that, that makes it worth your while to buy it rather than going to the trouble of downloading it. Because really, Bit BitTorrent is complicated for the average person to use. Yeah, it is. I mean, most people don't even know it exists. Yeah, I'm just saying it, it's also like fast, you know, because you, but I know like LimeWire back in the day, you had to find every song by yourself, but like, on torrents, you just find the CD and you're like basically good. Yeah, but I I I, I have seen BitTorrent in action. I saw somebody try to download a box set, and it took two days. Wow. You know what? Yeah. I got better things to do with my time than to spend two days downloading a couple of CDs. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, I saw that and I'm like, what? <laughs> what is so revolutionary about that? Yeah. Nothing. All right, thanks, Tom. Um, could you take me out with a bong rip? Here you go, Austin. <coughs> you know, like everybody else, when Napster was first out there, I downloaded songs on Napster. Found out how it worked, did it. Probably downloaded a couple hundred songs back then. But come on, 99 cents for a song, if I don't have to buy the whole CD on iTunes or... You know, I can get it on Rhapsody or some of these other music services. What's the point? A lot of these uh, these cuts that are online are badly transferred uh, to uh, to uh, <coughs> files, and the files, uh, uh, you know, have the beginning or the end cut off, or they've got modulation problems or whatever. I mean, for ninety nine cents, I can get the whole song, and I don't have to buy an album. So for me, it's better to just pay for it than to take that kind of risk. Not, I mean, really, you know, if I were living in a college dorm room and I were, you know, just doing crystal meth and sitting up for 72 hours at a time, maybe I'd get on BitTorrent and try to download Titanic. Okay, maybe I would. But I got other things in my life to do. <laughs> Easier to just buy it. If I ever go back to tweaking. I want to talk to all you people. one eight hundred five eight hundred tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, it's an honor and a privilege to finally talk to you. It is indeed. I've been listening to you this September mark 10 years, believe it or not. And I've wow. never called before. This is the first time. Wow. And unfortunately, the station we have here in Vegas, they were pretty quick to cut you guys out when the Dodgers play. So I have to listen to you online a lot. Yeah, I understand. You're aware of that, I'm sure. Um, I actually have a lot in common with you. The only difference is you're uh, a little bit older than me and you got a lot more money than me. But uh, I like wine. I'm 36. I've been married. No kids. No plans. I'm a true like kiss 101 student. And uh, the only difference is, is you're a Kings fan and I'm a Ducks fan. And I want to know what's wrong with the, with the Kings this year. Well, it's not what's wrong with the Kings. I mean, the Kings have taken a particular strategy, and that is uh, they are building a team from the ground up. So they have gotten rid of the big salaries, traded away a lot of uh, higher price players for draft picks. And in the 08 draft, they have something like eight or nine first and second round draft picks. Uh, are you, you and with, the worst, and with the worst record in the National Hockey League, uh, they have a good shot of getting the number one pick. Well, are they going to fire Crawford this year, you think? No. No. Why? Uh, because they're near the bottom of the standings? They're near the bottom of the standings because they're a rebuilding team. Oh, they're rebuilding. Oh. Actually, not rebuilding. They're building because they had nothing to rebuild. They're building a team from scratch. Uh -huh. uh, the general manager of the Kings is somebody named Dean Lombardi. And, I know. And Dean Lombardi did the San Jose Sharks and did a pretty damn good job with them for years. So you think it's going to take a few years, huh? Well, no. I, I think next year you're going to start to see the results. of the You're starting to see it now because the Kings... 
Uh, and for people who don't know, the Kings play in the National Hockey League, Los Angeles Kings. Um, the Kings have players this season who are having amazing years. Dustin Brown, leading the National Hockey League in hits. I think he has 28 goals this season. He had two last night. Uh, uh, uh Andre Kopitar, having another great season. The guy has like, a, he's averaging like a point a game. But they also need to address their goaltending situation, it seems. Well, I think they're, again, they're in a state of flux with their goaltending situation. They're stuck with a big contract with this guy, Dan Cloutier, who uh, is a below par uh, a goaltender at this point in his career. Uh -huh. But, you know, they're paying the guy, and since they're not going to the playoffs anyway, they're using him right now. Do you go to every home game? Uh, just about, unless I happen to be, you know, at, at work or something and I can't get there. But I'm, I'm there on virtually every game. Because I'm going to the Canucks-Kings game next week. Can you be there? Probably. Oh, uh, do you have like your own uh, suite or something? No, I no. sit. I don't sit in a suite for the game. I sit down in the stands because those seats, those seats are too far, huh? For my taste, yes. Uh, I mean, I you know, if I look, if I were closing a business deal, I needed a table for someone right. to sign a contract. Maybe I'd be in a suite, but uh -huh. no, I sit in seats. I have seats, and I've been going to the games for twenty years. I know. I've been listening to you for ten, so I know all about you, Tom. Yeah, well, and, there I, you and I really enjoy uh, your advice. And it's true. Women don't want to hear it. That's why women call you up and give you a hard time. But it's true. And the only difference, I, I think, is when you say never spend more than 40 bucks, I know how you can do it for less than 10 Just get a nice bottle of wine, get a woman liquored up. That's all you need. Is um, nice as I wine. said, 40 is a maximum. Yeah. I always say zero is optimum. You know what always works for me, Tom, is tell a woman, it's a nice night. Let's go to the park. Pick up a bottle of wine, get a couple of plastic glasses. That's all you need. Really? Trust me. It's been working for me for 36 years. That's that so. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tom. Wait, by the way, in Vegas, huh? what park do you take her to? I'm just curious. In Las oh, Vegas? Geez, like, there's quite a few of them around here. And they're all pretty nice parks because so they're all well lit. Really? And, and do they have grass? Yeah. Outside like, of golf courses in Vegas? Come on. Well, most of them are like either soccer fields or baseball fields. And, and you then, take her to the, uh, the racetrack. Got NASCAR this weekend. Uh, I'm not into racing. It's a real pain getting in and out of that. Well, they got that big grass infield. Ah, I never actually. I've never been there. I've never been there. All I know is the traffic getting in and out. I don't. Are you going to the race? I was at the race uh, last weekend in Fontana. They got uh, pretty much rained out. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tom, can you blow me up? And like I say, I'll be listening to you for the next ten years. I right, good. I can use all the help I can get. <laughs> Eight hundred five, eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. It's Jacob on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, baby? Um, the ratings and my paycheck. Last I looked. That's right. Listen, I got a situation. Um, I've been living at this house for a year. I've been paying my rent on time the entire time. The last three months, I, however, I've been paying my rent to a, a different lady. She comes up, um, getting getting the rent money. Of the last of three months, which was, I was told was okay by the owner. Well, now the cops show up in my house today, giving me a five day notice to move out because this idiot owner has been foreclosed on without telling me what the hell's going on. So now I'm supposed to pack up my wife, my two kids, and get the hell out of this house in five days. Well, you could always hire an attorney, Jacob, but I would imagine if you're renting a place like that, you probably can't afford one. No, actually, I can't afford one. The uh, The rent of this place is 2700 a month. All right, then you need to call your attorney. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to do, but the idiot's not answering his friggin' Well, then you need right. a new attorney. Nobody seems to want to answer. I called six. Oh, come on. Come on, Jacob. Well, it's Friday. It's Friday evening. I you got to pay more than 50 bucks. you got to stop with Jacoby and Myers and, and Larry, uh, what's his name? Larry Parker. Larry H. Parker. But aren't they accident lawyers? Whatever. you got to step it up to somebody who charges at least $100 an hour. Yeah, I'm not worried about the, about, about the cost. I know. So I, I have the money. Did you refer me to anybody? Well, no, I don't do referrals on the air because if you lose, you might sue me. So I don't do that. <laughs> okay, well, that was all I wanted to know. Can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I breathe. She's so special to me. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Or you can visit our website and hear our show streaming live. If your station takes us away, just go to blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.
97.1 Free FM, SoCal's FM Talk Station.